mm -hmm. okay. um, that will just kind of tell you, we'll tell you a little about what we're going to do with um, the information we are getting from everyone. It's going to be on record at UWM for not just our project, but for future students that might be doing projects on the community. So they'll be able to use any of the information we collect. Okay. Um, did you look at the uh, blueprints that I sent? Yes, yeah. we did. They were great. Oh, okay. They were great, seriously. Good. Everyone was really excited to go through them when they were comparing the floor plan drawings that we were doing to everything else that you provided us. And it was really exciting for our whole yeah. class. It was nice, too, that, I mean, the brochure provided the manufacturer name mm -hmm. and the specific design <laughs> name, yeah. you know, and so it was really fun. And now this week we've been working on like uh, doing all the like additional researches. So we've done the measured drawings and we've now done like oral histories and now we're doing like archive searches. Mm. And so that's where the plans come in. We haven't quite gotten to researching what company that was and like where they're where their distribution was, but it's yeah. it's exciting to have that like piece of information because it provides us with a great place to start. Good. Yeah. Glad to hear it. So do you want to sign the forms now? Uh, we or do you want to do them? After? We could probably wait till the end. Um, we do allow an opportunity if there's anything you do say that we record that you don't want included on the record that you have the opportunity to disclose any of that information you don't okay. want us including. Yeah. Um, sure. So yeah, I'll just leave that out for the end. Um, but yeah, if you just want to start telling us a little about yourself. Yeah. Um, Maybe start with uh, your name. And are we recording now? Yeah, yes, we are. Oh, yeah, it's okay. awesome. Okay. So just like start with your name and maybe if you want to tell us you know that you're living in Thurston Woods just so we get your voice okay. saying that you're in Thurston Woods and your name and you know, maybe when you moved here, and then we can go into other stuff. The yeah. story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is George Crosby. Um, I am a uh, trainer for the profession. I uh, design and implement training mainly for utility construction companies, mostly underground, some overhead as well. So, and that has me traveling around the country. Um, that's why I couldn't interview last week because I was at one of my clients down in Indianapolis. Um, I've lived here. Well, I used to, I, I used to live over on Forty Second Street, and my wife and I got divorced, and I rented an apartment up in Brown Deer. Well, after a divorce, she bought the house next door to me, to the south and uh, she needed someone to rent it to, so she decided to rent it to me. And I agreed to rent, because it was a nice home. They had a above-ground pool in the back and so forth, and uh, you know, it was cheaper than actually renting up and around here. So I said, okay, well, that was in uh, December, or no, November of 2000. And then in December of 2000, this house came up for sale. And so I decided to buy this one, and I would rent it out. And I rented it out to her brother, my ex-wife's brother. So it was all in the family. I mean, it seems kind of strange. People think, you know, you, what? Eh, how's this working? Anyway, so I rented it to him. Um, the lady who used to own it was Dorothy Engelhart. And uh, she and her husband, and I, they raised a son, and I think they raised a daughter as well here. How they did it, I don't know. It's a small house. Um, but I bought the home from her. She, They were the original owners of the building. And I bought from them, um, from her. Her husband had died. Uh, she had cancer, and her son was moving her out to Waukesha to a, to a uh, nursing home, still nursing. So. so I bought the home in December, and then I rented out to her brother. And then in um, 2005, I got in trouble financially and had to file for bankruptcy. So I didn't want to lose the home. So basically, myself and my former brother-in-law switched places. I moved in here, he moved in there. 
and I've been living here ever since. So you've been you've been on this street for about twelve years. Twelve years, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you you lived over on Forty Second, you mm -hmm. said. So how long have you been living in Thurston Woods? In the Thurston Woods area? Yeah. Well, we we bought that home. That was actually her childhood home. We bought it from her father passed away, and we bought it from the estate in. Uh, Do you remember what the address was? On that? Five eight, um, five eight two five, uh, fifty six eighty one. Forty second. Yeah, North Forty second, and it, and it was one of the original homes in, in the area. It was built back in uh, nineteen thirteen, I think it was. Um, this used to be part of Granville area, and that was that was the old farmhouse that was there. Um, And you can tell because the way they built homes back then, there's two giant chestnut trees out in the front yard. And that's when they built homes back then, that's what they did. They put chestnut trees in the front yard. So, and they're still there. So then her her family lived in that home from from the time it was built? Or? No. No, her father uh, moved moved her kids in there, moved his kids in there and uh, 64, I think. 1964. I'm pretty sure that's when it was. And it was owned by the, the couple that lived next door. Um, I'm trying to think of her name. God, I went to the funeral. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Owen owned, owned the home. I don't know how long they had owned it. But they lived in the house to, just to the north of it. They owned it, and then they, he actually, my ex-wife's father, uh, Bill Falvey, bought it on a land lease, sort of from a lease to, lease to buy, and then eventually bought the whole thing out, so. So that, that, so from 89 to 2012, that's 89, 99, 99 <laughs> 23 years? 23 years. 23 yeah. years. And so, have you seen a lot of change in the neighborhood? Oh yeah, yeah. What is, what did the neighborhood look like when um, you first moved here? Well, it was um, people took good care of their homes. You know, they 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 were mostly owners, um, and then later on, renters started coming in, and trouble came in with them. Why do you why do you think that is? Like, what's the difference between? Well, the the people that own the homes, they take care of them. They, they want to take care of them. That's their property. But you know, when you get renters in, renters don't care. And a lot of them were people that came from the core. You know, they weren't real well to do it. Um, one of the problems we had was when Mrs. Owen died. Uh, a guy bought the place and decided he was going to rent it out, and but he was overseas or something or other, I don't know, but his mother was supposed to handle it and she didn't do anything. And we complained to neighborhood services a lot and, you know, we, nothing would get done. They'd leave their trash out on the front, you know, just sitting out front, piled up high and so forth, and, you know, they break out windows. And, at one, at one point, they, they because they knew we had called, they threw eggs at my wife's car. You know, just things like that. So, yeah. you know, then we got divorced, and she continued to live there up until I don't know a few years ago. And finally, she just got fed up and said, "The heck with it." And they they're renting a home now up in Menominee Falls, and she's renting that one out. So. Oh. But her husband. Uh, is a property manager, and so he knows how to find good tenants. So the people who live next door here are real good. The people who live there are great. You know, they have their families. They take care of their properties. So That's nice. That makes a difference. So then, after you left that house and you moved in into this, this street, yeah, you know, in this neighborhood, 
Is there a big difference between living over on 42nd and then living here on 38th? I think so. I think 42nd Street has a lot more crime on it um, than we do here. Um, they've got the they've got the one of the things that was problems in that neighborhood was uh, Carlton School was there, the elementary school, and they had basketball courts, and so the kids were playing basketball all night long, you know, and they're troublemakers, you know. Well, basketball can get pretty competitive, you know, and yeah. so I yeah. can, you know, <laughs> I can see how that, and especially if it's going all night long, you don't know if they're partying and drinking and playing. And on the other hand, on this street, a lot of the people own their homes. Oh, there, there's a few that rent, um, but the ones that do, um, they got good tenants. This house, there used to be a house across the street over here that, that just was constantly troubled. Um, see where that red car is? Yeah. The home, the home right to, to the south of that. Oh yeah, with there's the... A, there's an old couple, yeah, there, that, that was one of them. There's an old couple that lived there, um, real old, and the family that moved in there had two little kids, troublemakers. They're constantly, you know, they stand outside and yell and scream at each other and throw things and so forth. Well, one of them, the car was gone, and so they thought the old folks had left because they usually left as a couple. Well, it was just the guy that left. They broke into the back window, and there was the missus catching them breaking into the house. You know, just things like that. They, I, I don't know why the guy did it, but he fixed that place up. Like every six months, he was replacing cabinets and so forth and throwing out tenants. Now he's got some good people there and all the problems are gone. So I don't know how he could afford to keep, yeah, keep right. doing that, you know. Yeah. Maybe if the house was paid off, but then all the money you're getting from the tenants, you're putting into you're the You're putting right back again. in again, and so, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. So, but that, that was really about the only problem that I've seen here. We've... Uh, we had uh, down the street here, um, there was a guy, a family that used to live in the home down the street here. He turned it into a duplex. Uh, his name was Lucky Briggs. And Lucky had his wife and two sons that were about the same age as my son. And uh, Lucky uh, was off his nut a little bit, I think. He, uh, he got in a really bad motorcycle accident and I think he got some brain damage because of it. And he started drinking a lot and getting in trouble and so forth. And, and uh, he moved into a home. He, he has a home over on 35th Street and another one way up north here um, that he rents out. And uh, he lost this one. The bank foreclosed on this one for some reason. I don't know. But the bank was renting to a tenant and a family and one of the teenage girls had her 21-year-old boyfriend over and he was playing with his revolver and shot himself in the head. That was about probably four or five years ago. So, you know. that's That's kind of scary because, yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate that he shot himself in the head, but, yeah, but, but it could still, have been I mean, anybody. Could have been anybody, that's right. Could have been kids playing out on the street, right. Who knows, mm -hmm. you know. So they threw them out. Well, the guy that bought the place, he, he's renting out. He's renting out again, but he's living in one half and renting out the other. And he's got some good tenants in there now, so that's, that's that problem's gone. Um, we there was one time, several years ago. I came home and I was pulling into the driveway and I saw a whole bunch of squad cars out by Lucky's house. And I was like, what the heck? And so I walked over there. Well, apparently there was some guy that got in a fight at one of the bars down here on Silver Spring and got stabbed in the stomach. And he was running away and he got as far as the tree out in front of Lucky's house. And that was it. I, I think he survived. I don't know. But, wow. You know, it's like, what the heck? 
So when you moved in here in 89, was it a little, was it a little safer? And do you feel like it's become less safe? The or, neighborhood, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Pearson Woods as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, th although although this area, this for some reason, this street is much safer than 42nd. Mm -hmm. And again, I think it's because there's a lot more homeowners. Right. So. Well, that's interesting that you know renters would bring more crime or more like negativity with them or bad renters. Well, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, statistics show that when the, when the neighborhood gets like 60 percent renter, 40 percent ownership, then it starts deteriorating. It just mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm anywhere yeah that makes sense though because yeah. like you were saying homeowners take pride in their property yeah That's and and some landlords they don't care who they rent to you know they'll buy up the homes you know they don't care who they rent to hmm. so. That's so since you've moved in here to this street in 2000 yeah. has it been a lot more it's been a lot more peaceful i mean because I mean, you said that Lucky's house had a little. Well, Lucky's house had problems. Yeah, yeah it's been it's been fine, really. That's good. I mean, there, you know, every once in a while there's an incident. Um, I know when my former brother-in-law Stephen was living next door. Um, he was living there, and, and apparently the, the the people that live just past him. I know Joanne, and I don't, but I don't know her mother's name. Her mother had some cancer. And Joanne was living there along with her sister and her nephew. And her nephew got told some friends that the old lady was uh, smoking marijuana because of her cancer. So Stephen's in his house, and it's dark out. It's like a, a Sunday night in, in October, and, and uh, kind of overcast, you know, and cloudy and so forth. And uh, these two guys come up and knock on the door, and he thought it was Christian, my son. And as soon as he opened the door, they pulled out a gun and went inside and said, where's the old lady's weed? We want the old lady's weed. And Stephen's like, what old lady? I don't, I don't have any dope, you know? What do you want? I, you know? And they held him at gunpoint for quite a while, and then, you know, they demanded to know where's the weed. Um, so then they stole his computer and took off. They basically hit the wrong house. Right. Mm -hmm. And apparently this guy must have been telling his friends, it's, this nephew must have been telling his friends at school about it. Right. And a couple guys got wind of it and decided to hit the place, but they hit the wrong house. That's, yeah. I mean, that's freaky. You don't expect stuff. Like yeah, that. right. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, and you that, seem to know your neighbors pretty well around here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like that's the case in all parts of Thurston Woods. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I, I know several of them, but not all of them. Yeah. You know. Do you feel like there's less turnover here with some of the houses that oh, people yeah. aren't moving in and out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Kalers have been here forever. And the next, the next two neighbors next to them have been here forever. Yeah. Why do you, why do you think that is? Just because they own a house and they sell it down, or you know, they own it and they're, you know, they're retired and taking it easy and just, you know, mm -hmm. I know the old couple whose house was broken into. They every year, or every winter, they go down to Florida. They're snowbirds. So. Can't handle the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Can't blame them. Nice if you can do it. Yeah, right. right. Hmm. That's interesting. So, since you know your neighbors, do you feel like there's a sense of community on this street? I mean, the, do people watch each other's back? Do they? Oh are yeah. They like, yeah. You know, neighborhood groups that take care of. Families? Well, they they every year we have a block watch party. Are you, you know, part right? of the block watch? No. 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 Who is part of the block watch? What is it? <laughs> I, I don't know who runs it. I just get leaflets on my door. But every year we block off the street from Silver Spring up to uh, Florist. And, you know, people walk up and down the street. People are grilling out and they'll chat with each other and get to know each other and so forth. So, That's amazing. You know, yeah. Do you think that there are, there are strong presents on the street, the block watch? Mm -hmm. Do you, Does it help 
I think so. I mean, I mean, I, I feel safe, you know, and I'm I'm looking out for others, and I know others are looking out for me as well. So, you know, I'm home quite a lot, so I can see a lot of things going on. Right, right. That's nice. So then there's at least a, a sense of safety there. Looking out for each other and community development in that sense, you know, like a community yeah. thing. Because I mean, I know so many people that live somewhere and they don't even they don't even know what their neighbors look like. Yeah. You know. And so, do you think that's unique to Thurston Woods that, or unique to your I don't know. street? I think it, I don't know about the other streets. I know what this street is like. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, maybe it's just the street. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Because we were talking to Jean over on. She's on 34th. 34th. So she's just two, almost two, two streets down. She's kind of got the same situation where she knows her street and the people that live on her street, but she doesn't really branch out to yeah, other neighborhoods. Yeah. 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 So, I guess my question is like, why? Why is that? That you just get to know the people on your street? Is it because there aren't very many? like social places in the neighborhood, you know, like, because I've been looking around. I mean, we just, you know, the, you know, yeah. we just say hi to each other, you know, I mean, it's just, yeah. you know, when I first moved in on next door over there, of course, the Kalers came over and their kids were the same age as my son, so, you know, they were playing in the pool and Lucky's kids were playing in the pool and, and Marge and Bill came over to introduce themselves to us and, you know, it just, so just kind of happen. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's pretty awesome. much how it goes a lot of the time. Right. Yeah. right. No. I guess, have you, since you've lived here for so long, have you noticed um, different businesses come in and out? Do you think that that plays any sort of role in the neighborhood? Like different different restaurants, different bars, different... I haven't really seen any. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean it's... You know, there's that food market up uh, up there on Florist. Um, I know a lot of the kids go up there and buy their candies and sodas and stuff. You know, I wouldn't let my kid go up there because I didn't think it was safe. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, down on Silver Spring, it's the same businesses that have been there for as long as I know. You know, there hasn't really been any turnover. So where where do you go to get groceries and like everyday? Well, me, I go to Pick and Save way up on, on Green Bay and Brown Deer. Oh, okay. And that's that's the closest one, or that's just your favorite one? That's my favorite one. There's there's one over on Silver Spring, way down on Silver Spring by uh, across from Heiser Ford. But I don't go there very often. Yeah. Are there any other, I mean, besides restaurants and bars, are there any other, like, fun places in the neighborhood? Really no. seen anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't noticed much to do. Do you think that no. that's a problem or do you think that that's okay? Do you think No, that's fine. I mean this is this is a residential area, you know. And yeah, uh, you know, like my son when he wants to play, when he was at home, he wanted to play, he'd go down go down to the church, they have a park. Okay. You know, they have swings and stuff and you know, of course I had a pool in my backyard and so a lot of the Neighborhood kids wanted to swim in the pool, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. So it works out, even though there's yeah. not a lot of entertainment. Yeah, that's nice. That's good. Do you like? And, and uh, Davy across the street, yeah. the son, um, he's big into uh, skateboarding, and so he was constantly out skateboarding on the street, and all his friends would be around, you know, and he had a little. Uh, you know, RF car things that he'd run up and down the street. And he had all sorts of toys. Yeah. So they'd play those. And they'd come over here or over to when I was living next door and they'd play video games, you know, and whatever. So, you know, they always found something to do. That's cool. Huh, that's awesome. So do you, it sounds like you like living here. Do you like it? Um, yeah, I guess I do. I'm comfortable with it. Would you I mean, obviously, if I could afford a nice place in the suburbs, I'd be there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What? I mean, because, you know, I don't know, it seems like this is a nice size house for a single family. 
a for a single guy, guy, it's fine. You know, and yeah. you know, you say that this street's relatively safe. I mean, do you yeah. Do you think the suburbs suburbs have more to offer? I mean, for your lifestyle, for for you. Not really. Just I mean, a nicer home, but that's about it. Yeah. You know, more more, more lawn to mow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something that we've noticed is that the the front yards, I mean it's almost like you can tell the difference who owns and who rents just by their front yard. Yeah. So I mean I see that you have your trees and you have bushes that you take care of and yeah. you know, you have your grass is cut. Yeah. But uh got the kid next door cutting the lawn. He hasn't cut it for a while though because it's been so dry, you know. Yeah, it takes forever to grow. That's true. Do you notice a difference when you drive around the neighborhood in yeah, the yards and um, the you'll, you'll notice that one of the house across the street from you just north of them, it's a lot that's empty. They tore down a house that had been there for, God, five years I think, at least. There was a there was a retired veteran that lived there, and uh, he died in a house fire. He had something cooking on the stove downstairs. He went upstairs to change or something, and it set the house on fire. He got trapped, and he died. Well, he owed the city taxes on the property, and so the city got the property, and you know it just it just sat there forever. And the windows were busted out. You know, it went through several winters and you know squirrels were in there and birds and so forth and, and then finally just a couple months ago they finally tore the whole thing down so why don't they why? the city in fact i got a letter everyone in the neighborhood got a letter we could have bought the place for twenty five hundred dollars but it had to be owner occupied well you know it's completely gutted on the inside it, you know it'd take you forever to fix it all up you know wasn't worth it so why didn't they sell it sooner hmm? why didn't they why didn't the city sell it sooner you know like after they got it why didn't they try to turn it know. around and sell it I don't know I don't know there's another one just they just had to fire was it last fall no it was early in the spring there's another house down the street it was the same thing it just completely gutted it it's all boarded up and it's just sitting there empty I think it was one of those where it was, you know, the guy owned, someone owned it and rented it to the tenants and isn't bothering to fix it all up and eventually that one's going to get torn down. So. And then they just leave empty lots? Well, I'm sure the city's going to try and sell the lot, you know, if they can. Yeah, yeah. And then just hope that somebody builds something on builds, it? Builds a home on it, yeah. yeah. Huh, that's interesting. It's weird that they wouldn't try to sell them sooner or something, you know. I, don't know. I think it was, it was tied up in court for a while. Um, I, I, don't, I don't even know all the specifics behind it. Yeah. So those are, that's two fires in the neighborhood in the past five years, ten years? Yeah, five, six years, seven years maybe. Do you think that has anything to do with the housing? The housing being older. I mean, like, is it because no, people aren't? No, no. I just, I just think it's. Uh, I mean, I don't even know what started this fire. Yeah. Um, the the people that were living there, they weren't even home when the fire came out. I mean, you know, it was fully engulfed when the fire department got there. I guess it started in the back. Might have been an electrical thing. Mm -hmm. uh, That's no. Could have been wiring. I mean, these there are a lot of old homes here. I'm, I'm repla I replaced the wiring in this house. You know, and it had the old uh, what they called DX cable. It was a flexible snake type type stuff with the wire inside of it. Oh, you know? yeah. And you know, the two prong outlets not grounded. You know, and I just decided I'm not going to live in a house like that. Yeah, you know, it's no, too dangerous. No. Well, and especially with today's modern, you know, technology-driven... Well, and, you know, and, and, yeah, and I had to have the service upgraded. It was a 60-amp fuse. Oh, wow. And I upgraded <laughs> it to 200-amp uh, yeah. circuit breakers. 
you know, because the more and more we're drawing on power yeah. for the homes mm -hmm. these days. So I mean, I don't even know any lamps that I mean, you know, yeah. even today's lamps are so like high tech that you know they they claim to be you know, yeah. low energy and this that and the other thing. But, well, you know, everything. Is, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got all the all the energy efficient light bulbs in the house, but you know, I, I found out when one burned out that you can't just throw them in the trash because they contain mercury. Oh. It's like, why would we give up incandescent bulbs for bulbs that last five times longer but contain mercury? You yeah. Know? You that can't. You can't just throw them in the garbage. So what do you have to do? You collect them and then bring them somewhere? You or? collect them all up and you take them up to. Uh, to the uh, hazardous waste dump up by Menominee Falls. Well, well, that doesn't seem right. No, I know. It's kind of goofy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they they use less energy. Well, and the government but mandated not that, necessarily that incandescent better. bulbs could no longer be manufactured. So, you know, here we are. Hmm. You got these, and you got uh, LCD bulbs. Or LED, I guess. Oh yeah, oh, I yeah. know what you meant. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that. I wonder if they're much better than. I don't know. The other ones. I don't think I've got one in my bathroom, and it's not as bright as the other two bulbs. Oh, Even though it says it's the same. Water. You know, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so do you think? Do you think other people in the neighborhood are updating their electrical and? plumbing and like all that stuff or do you think no. that's something that needs to be I haven't I haven't seen much of that going on. I don't know, they may have already done it. Yeah. You know, I I don't know. Because yeah. um, that's one thing we were talking to somebody else and she had said that on her street, um, a lot of the people still haven't even put in like air conditioning or like any of the like updated things that, you know yeah. that people do. Do you I don't think know. there's a need for it, or do you think, huh? do you think there's a need for it, or do you think the houses are you know good enough as they are? No, I think they probably should have it. You know, I mean that house down the street probably would not have burned had the wiring been upgraded. But you know, here again, it was it was uh, absentee landlord owned. They aren't going to spend the money doing that. They don't care. So, I know I know the house I used to live in next door here. Um, the people that lived there before me, uh, the guy had a locksmith business, and he had the house, he had the electrical wiring upgraded, and he had, he had uh, her, he had his wife's father do it. Well, I don't think he knew exactly what he was doing, because when I moved in there, I found a lot of the circuits, he had the polarity reversed. He had the positive and the neutral, or positive and negative reversed, and I was like, you know, that's not good. Right, and <laughs> start a fire. <laughs> yeah, so I had to switch all the wiring around. So do you think? Yeah. And I did all. I redid all the wiring over on uh, 80, on 42nd Street as well. So you do yeah. a lot in the in the neighborhood. Huh? You do a lot in the neighborhood because I think we were talking to Lori, and she said that you patched up her floor at some point. Lori, oh, at one point, yeah. Kaler or Kohler? Yeah, Kaler's. Yeah. Kaler, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right across the street. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah oh, I didn't even put. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't even put that together that that was Lori's house. Yeah. 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 That's right. Oh my gosh. But yeah. So. Um, yeah, I did. I do. I I used to do a lot of woodworking. I actually had a woodworking business um, that went under. That's why I filed for bankruptcy. So, <laughs> but I've done a lot of uh, a lot of home improvement stuff. You know. Do you just do they do you just do it because you're part of the neighborhood, or do they pay you for it, or do you? Do oh no, that's probably the only one I've done work for. them and these two homes is about that. Yeah, but well, that's nice. I mean, 
we had the, um, the house next door here earlier this year. Um, they have an electric garage door opener, and every once in a while, it would it wouldn't work. You know, it'd be this pop, and you know, they they blow the fuse, and you know, they don't know what blows the fuse, and, and uh, so one day, Tony, who's the wife over here was walking out of the garage, the garage door was closing and she heard this loud pop and the garage door stopped. She's like, what the heck? And she hit the fuse and the fuse wouldn't go back on and you know. So we figured there was a there was probably a short in the wire. We couldn't figure out where. I mean I looked at all the wiring. It turns out that the wiring in the ground uh, had shorted out. And the way they had it was it came out of the house into a pipe that ran down into the ground, just about maybe six inches into the ground, and that was it. And then the wire was buried in the dirt up to the garage. Oh. So this wire through freeze and thaw all you know, several years, I don't know how many years it was there, twenty years I suppose. Yeah. Uh, it basically wore that wire right at that joint where it where it leaves the pipe. <coughs> and so we had to replace the wiring on that. And we were confounded for the longest time trying to figure out what was wrong, what was causing all this, and we couldn't, until she heard that pop as she was just walking up by the edge of the house, that's when she heard it. Wow. That's, that's when we figured out what it must have been, right. so then we had to rerun all the wiring. And, that's scary. Yeah. And the, that close to the house, I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, if someone had been standing out there barefoot on the ground, they might have got zipped. <laughs> You know? right. yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been shocked by electricity like changing an outlet. I grabbed the sides of it one time and it like Ooh. all the way up my arm. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so I can't even imagine like. Well, that's oh. why that's why they make ground fault circuit interrupters. And I when I redid this house, I made sure every circuit, the first outlet was GFI. Okay. So, yeah. Because I had that happen to me once before when I was. Over on 42nd Street, I was down in the basement. I had my woodworking all set up, and I was down in the basement working, and, and I was replacing the uh, the switch on an old uh, joiner, and I had my hand on the on the on the plate on the joiner top, and I turned the switch on, and all of a sudden I heard this. I, I felt just this real little tingle, right? And I was like, "What the heck?" And that's when I realized that I had it wired wrong, oh, and it shorted out. <clears throat> but fortunately, I had the GFI right there, and the GFI popped off and kept me from being electrocuted. So, right. oh, yeah. so everything now I, I, I put you know, by code. You're only supposed to have it in the kitchen and the bathroom, but I put it on all of them. Just I'd rather be safe. Yeah, definitely. Electricity is scary. Yeah. I know you put a lot of work into this house, it seems. Like you were mentioning last time we were here how you really worked a lot in this room. Yeah. Um, could you kind of explain some of those changes that you've made? Well, um, yeah. One of the things I did was I tore down all the walls except for this little wall here and the ceiling. And it was all that fiberboard that I showed you. And the walls, because it's prefab, the walls weren't thick enough. They were only, instead of being uh, two by fours, which is actually three and a half by one and a half, they were one and a quarter by three inches. And so you can't put in regular insulation there, right? So I had to build the walls out. I had to add in half inch um, strips to the, to the studs so I could get enough room to get the insulation in there. The insulation that was in there was was maybe an inch thick. Oh. That was it. I mean, you know, there's nothing. It's a prefab, so they're going to use all the cheap materials that they can. You know. Mm -hmm. So I did that while I built the walls out, and then I struggled to get all the drywall up. And I redid the wiring at the same time I did that. Um, as you can see, I still got more to do because I haven't got the trim up yet. But you know, but it's comfortable. Yeah. You know, I'm getting there a little bit at a time. I think that's part of the joy of owning your own house is that 
you can change it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You, can, you don't like it, you fix it up. Yeah. Paint it or whatever. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah, I've, I've got a lot of plan. I'm going to be fixing up a lot of it in the next couple of years. So. Do you usually do it alone? Or huh? do, you, do you usually do it alone or do you have people that help you? Like family I usually, or friends? I usually do it I usually do it alone. When I was redoing this I had uh, uh, my ex's husband and my son. Mm -hmm. I think Davey helped us too if I'm not mistaken. Across the street. Oh nice. It was fun. You know, I enjoyed doing it. Yeah. I like the way it looks when I get done with it. Right. <laughs> When you're going through it, it's a little. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but. That's cool. I did a lot of home improvement, and then I got kind of tired of it and turned to doing woodworking instead. Mm -hmm. So, which is what I. Yeah. I haven't been able to do it lately because I don't have a shop set up. But, right, right. You know, when I lived next door, I had a basement over there. Oh, right, because that's, that's a stick build. That's stick built. They got a full basement, yeah. That's, right. that's interesting that this house that you're living in and the one next door, they're both prefab, right? Yeah. But they look just like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Did they do that on purpose? I don't think so. I mean, but, that's... No, I don't know. That's pretty funny, because I remember when we were walking up to this one, we were like, are all three of these houses the same? And then you had mentioned... Yeah, no. That was difficult. Hmm. That's yeah. We were wondering, you know, did did some like housing developer, you know, come through and say, oh, well, we've got two lots here, and we've already got a house right there. We could build that house and just put it. I have no idea. Right. I have no idea. I, I don't know if that house was built before or after this one. When was this one built? Do you remember exactly? I don't um, remember what the, the sheet said. I don't recall. I think it was like 57, 56 or 57 maybe. Okay. So that would have been... Yeah. Would that have been similar? Yeah, because the ones on 34th were built in 50 and 51. So then it yeah. seems like during the 50s there was a lot of investment into this neighborhood. Yeah, I think, I think that home was built later because they had drywall. And drywall came out in like the late 50s in the 60s. So prior to that, it was all lap and plaster. Oh, so. yeah. Huh. That's interesting. We were really interested in the material you gave us when we were flipping through um, some of the drawings, even just seeing that there was a brand name mm -hmm. for the entire like building and the drawing. So we haven't looked into it yet, but we're going to hopefully go and look into seeing like, um, seeing some more about that company and uh -huh. what other things they kind of produce. Yeah. So that'll be kind of interesting to investigate. It was national, something national company. Yeah. 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 I remember seeing it on the, the sheet, but I can't yeah. remember it now. But, yeah. but, but prefabs were, after World War II, prefabs became more popular because you were you know, they were they were very inexpensive. You know, you didn't, mm -hmm. and you didn't have to wait forever to get it built. You know, That's true. so all you had to do was buy a little piece of land and you know, they truck it in and put it all together. Yeah, that's one thing we noticed when we were measuring the outside is that your back wall is this exact same wall. You know, but it's just that one faces this way and the other one faces that way. So pretty they, much, you know, they're. The door here, was like yeah. kind of the same spot, and the windows were pretty close to the same spot. Yeah. So. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It was really oh. cool. It was in, it was interesting, you know, because like where this door is would be the same. Like it, it was pretty much the same once yeah. we did the measurements. So it was yeah, it's pretty huh. interesting. It's almost literally the same wall, <laughs> as if as if they like ordered it from just a kit of parts. They were like, all right, we need a front wall, a back wall, and two side walls. And so then they're the same walls, but just around the house. It was, really, yeah. it was cool. Yeah. You know? And I was like, oh, that is really efficient. You know? and I mean, and I like this house. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's really, it's really interesting that they can manufacture a house that's livable and comfortable 
for a small amount of people. I mean, having a full family of like six in here would be <laughs> maybe unbearable. <laughs> you know, but... I don't know. I lived in here with my son, and I think that was enough. Just, you know, I don't know how you can have more than a couple people living here. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know how Dorothy and Laura did it. How many people did they have again? I don't remember. Well, it was her and her husband, and I know they had a son. I think they also had a daughter as well. It seems to me when we were closing that she talked about her son and daughter. Thank you. You know, it's two bedroom. How do you how do you do that? You yeah. Know? I don't know. Yeah, I guess it depends how old how old the kids were. Cause, I mean, if they're really little, they could share a room. But if you know, as yeah, they get I mean, older, well, they, not so you much. know, they grew up here. You know. So. Oh wow. kids here. I don't know. The no. times were different back then, you know, and things, people yeah. were thinking different, you know. Yeah, that's true. A whole different, it was a whole different society back in the 50s. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, nowadays, people, I don't know if people want privacy more, but they want more space, for sure. Well, they want more space. That's why you see all these big homes out in the suburbs that you know, I, I was always amazed when, you know, working with utility companies, construction, you know, I'd go out on job sites and I'd see, you know, these subdivisions, big, huge subdivisions, huge homes, you know, probably at least a half a million dollars, and there'd be little, little kids' toys in the backyard, and I'm thinking, who makes that kind of money that they can afford a house like that? You know, what, what kind of, how can they do that? I, I don't know, it was everywhere. I, I, Still baffles yeah. me. Yeah, it boggles my mind too, you know, because you think of the middle class, you don't think of, or at least maybe I don't think of people buying half a million dollar homes. And, you know, even when I, I get a little bit of like ticket shock or price shock when yeah. I see houses that are even $250,000 and someone once told me that that was average, you know, at one point. Well, and, and you know, those are the people that got caught up in the housing boom as well. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. so and you know they thought, what the heck? You know, we're going to be making all this money for years to come. Just you know, let's buy a great big beautiful home, even though it's beyond our means. Yeah. And then they get caught up and yeah. get foreclosed, lose their jobs, and you know, the whole thing collapses, and the price of the home comes way down. Maybe. Fortunately, I didn't get in there. I was going to say. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Well, we were, before we got divorced, we were looking at buying a home out in East Troy. Uh, but there again, it was just a simple home. It wasn't going to be a great big, yeah. huge thing. You know? That's cool. Cool. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Um, the only other thing is, I know when we were here last time, you were telling us uh, some about how you were doing work upstairs and what you put through. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. I thought that'd be, a, if you wouldn't mind okay. telling us a little sure. bit about that. In the bedroom, there's, a, there's a, uh, a sheet of paneling up on the ceiling covering up the hole where I fell through. I was, I was actually doing the wiring and my son was laying here on the couch watching TV and uh, I was up there doing the wiring and you know, it's between their studs, you know, uh, beams, and, and I had insulation in there and so forth. I was trying to run the wiring, and I missed one of the supports and came crashing through down to about my waist. You know, oh, I, yeah. I managed to catch myself, but big chunk of ceiling came down and just scared the daylights <laughs> out of my son. <laughs> He came running in and saw me hanging through the ceiling there. He's like, what the heck? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> How did you so, get out? I just climbed out of it, I oh. guess. And then I went and got the paneling and screwed it up in there and covered it up. And so I, figured, I figured I'm in the process of fixing the place up. I'll get to it sooner or later. Yeah. It's been yeah. a few years now. So, Same thing happened a few years ago in the, in the uh, utility room. Um, the cable guy was working on putting in 
uh, Time Warner Cable was here putting in cable, and the guy missed his step right right by the opening there where you go up into the up mm -hmm. into the attic. Yeah. He missed his step and pushed his foot down through one and <laughs> caught himself in a beam, I guess. But, and he's like, oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, don't worry about it. I'm going to be fixing the place up anyways. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh my god. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of fun stuff happening in this house. <laughs> <laughs> there has been, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, was, that, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to redo the wiring was because... Uh, if I had the washer or the dryer going, and it, both rooms were all on the same circuit. So there was the washer, the dryer, the refrigerator, the stove light, the computer system, the microwave, and you know, I could have, you know, the computer's always going. But if I was running the dishwasher or running the washing machine, and I turn on the microwave, ah, it'd blow a fuse, you know, and I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. You know? Why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So. That's good. I don't know. Anything else? I don't think we have any more questions, but if you wouldn't mind if we went around and took a couple pictures. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell us about your house or the neighborhood or your experiences here? Anything um, that you really want to get out there? Covered it all. <laughs> I don't know what major adventures have happened over the years. Right. Well, thank you so much sure. for your time. Sure. And she'll get some pictures and then we'll get on out of here and let you get yeah. on with your day. <laughs> okay. so. I'm trying to think what else I can share with you.